the fears of their lead. Let's go in the darkest valley. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Bless God, my hands are empty. Bless God, with the praise that holds me. Bless God, when the body's watching. Every chance I get, I bless your name. Today is your day. We thank you that you are shining down on us with your love. We thank you, Lord, that you are the way maker. We thank you that you're always faithful. And Lord, I just thank you this morning that you are going to speak to people. You're going to change people's hearts. You're going to turn people's lives around. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone who believes says, Amen. Amen. Fantastic, fantastic. Welcome to Church Hill Song, Bali, 9.30 a.m. You turn around and look back there, guys. Have a look. Full. Because people want to be here to worship Jesus. 
It's amazing, right? It never gets old. It never, never, never gets old. You know, life is crazy sometimes, and there's a whole lot of prayer requests that I've got here, because life is crazy, and people need God's help, but thank God that He is on the throne. You know, thank God that He loves us so much, and that as we're about to pray, He listens. And so, can we do this together? There's a whole lot of um, prayer requests. I don't know if they're going to come up here again. Oh, here we go. Oh, these are Indonesian. That's why. Coming up here. If you can choose something there that you feel is close to your heart, and as we pray together, God's going to hear our prayer. Okay. And so there's some here. I've got uh, someone's asking uh, for their health to be better, um, for their business to be turned around. Someone's asking for, for healing and also for their job. Someone else is asking prayer for, again, their job, for their study. A safe flight back to Manado. Is that you? Okay. <laughs> uh, someone's praying for a family. Uh, I'll try, yeah. Bedoa unto keluarga Tuhan kasih kuasatian dan dan kesehatan. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, Apa pun yang menjadi Pergumulian Tuhan dengar Fantastic um, Midterm tests God's with you For sure You're going to nail it Painting exhibition Fantastic Alright So that's going to go well Of course Because we're going to pray for it And God's going to be all over it Alright So cool And these ones Yes, so if you want to choose something up here, let's all pray together. Father God, we just thank you that as we pray to you um, as a group, Lord God, you hear our prayer because you love us. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, nothing's too impossible for you. And Father, no matter what we're going through, Lord God, you have a solution, you have an answer. So right now we lift all these up to you, Lord God. We pray for victory, Lord God, over any issues that people are facing, Lord God. Let's pray for uh, unity, Lord God, where it's needed. Lord God, I pray for breakthrough financially where it's needed. I pray for businesses, Lord God, to be successful because your heart is with them, Lord God. Father, I just pray for those people who are going to study and do exams right now, Lord God. I just pray you give fresh resolution, fresh prison, Lord God, so people can uh, do what they need to do to pass it so they can rock a victory because of what you're going to do in their lives, Lord God. I pray for all manner of sickness and disease, Lord God, that has been nailed to the cross many, many times. It doesn't matter what happens, Lord God. Many, many times that people try and come to you, Lord God, you are going to solve their problem because you are God and your love reigns. You reign on the throne. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that as we pray, you listen. As we pray, Lord God, you hear what we are saying, Lord God, and you are going to do your thing because you love us. So we lift all these up to you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that it is done in Jesus' name. We thank you that it is nailed to the cross. And Jesus, because of your love, it is done. We thank you, Lord God, for it. We thank you, Lord God, that you're a true God. We thank you, you're a loving God. And we thank you as we continue to praise here, you are going to do your work. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's thank Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Kau selalu sempurna Dan tak pernah gagal Ada suka cita di rumah Tuhan pagi hari ini? Amen. Tell your neighbor, saya penuh dengan suka cita. What about you? Amazing. Tadi beli Aaron. Berdoa untuk beban doa dan di tangan saya ada beberapa praise report atau ucapan syukur yang teman-teman kita sudah masukin yaitu Nah, ada Bill yang bersyukur atas kesehatan, kekuatan untuk berkat Tuhan bagi saya sehingga saya dapat menikmati liburan di Bali. Yes, yang on holiday bersyukur nggak bisa holiday di Bali? Yes, yes, awesome. Kalau orang Bali setiap hari itu holiday, right? <laughs> ada yang bersyukur untuk apa nih? Untuk pekerjaan, untuk damai sejahtera dan untuk suami yang baik. Dan seorang pembimbing yang sejati luar biasa. Sering-sering bersyukur untuk suami, right? Iya dong. Sebentar lagi suami saya balik dari Kupang, everybody. Saya bersyukur karena kita as a church, kita release uh, our pastors untuk ada di Kupang untuk melayani Tuhan. Tadi jam 7 pagi, uh, Pastor Eka bersama Adil ada di gereja sidang jemaat Allah perjanjian baru khotbah jam 7 pagi, saudara. Luar biasa right Saya ikutin di live streamingnya And Adil berikan kesaksian And it was awesome And sekarang mereka ada di satu gereja lagi uh, Sunset Church untuk berbicara And then mereka akan fly back to to Bali Tepuk tangan buat you guys Yang release your pastors Also this morning saya bersyukur Bisa berdiri di samping my good friend Yes Yang kita doakan dia beberapa minggu yang lalu menjalani proses operasi dan um, yes treatment cancer and sekarang dia ada di sini kembali melayani and then minggu depan dia balik lagi ke Surabaya untuk kemoterapi but um, si looking good can, can you come come sebentar <laughs> Gladi this is my good friend Gladi yes she's our event coordinator di gereja ini You're looking good. I'm honored to serve this house. And we're gonna continue to pray. Karena the journey belum selesai, saudara. Tapi Tuhan tetap setia di dalam setiap musim kehidupan Gladian. It's gonna be amazing. You're looking good, by the way. Amazing. To keep up with you. <laughs> awesome. Are you good? Tepuk tangan sekali lagi buat Gladi. Tuhan kita, Tuhan yang luar biasa. Amen, amen. Well, welcome to Kebaktian Hillsong jam 9.30 pagi. Yes, saya pengen tahu siapa yang lagi on holiday di tempat ini, yang lagi liburan. Wow, wow so many hands. Oke, okay, oke, okay, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Ini um, yang di depan dari mana? Dari Jakarta, tepuk tangan buat teman-teman kita yang dari Jakarta. Mereka adalah orang-orang yang luar biasa yang datang dan membuat macet di Bali, tapi... Enggak apa-apa, kita don't mind the macet karena keuangan ekonomi di Bali akan bertumbuh. Yes. Anyone else yang lagi on holiday? Who's on holiday? Yes, da- yes dari mana? Bandung. Wah, Jakarta Bandung 11-12 ya. Welcome. Yang satu lagi yang tadi yes dari mana? Wow, Kalimantan Tengah. Is it Kalimantan ibu kota enggak? I'm sorry sejarah saya agak error But yes dari mana Oh Bukan Makassar South Australia South Australia welcome Welcome Apa ya sedikit ber, Ya bukan Makassar guys Oke okay, welcome Anyone else On holiday tadi Yes who are you? dari mana Dari Manado Yes We love orang Manado. We love Richa Richa Ayam dan Babi. Yes, anyone else? Yes, dari mana? Pak? Jepang? Japan. Apa tadi? Konnichiwa. <laughs> yes, welcome, welcome. Anyone else? Yes, where are you? Dari mana, Bu? Surabaya. Yes. I love our area. Surabaya. Yes. Anyone else? One more time, one more time. Yes, dari mana? 
Semarang Tepuk tangan baru teman kita dari Semarang Well so many teman-teman baru yang ada di tempat ini So kita friendly church antara chariot restaurant and booking.com So kita akan keluar dari tempat kenyamanan kita And we gonna say hi to people yang kita nggak kenal And make sure they feel comfortable Ajak makan siang, minum kopi Yes Jangan malu-malu Amazing Amazing Awesome All right. Well, everybody say dua minggu lagi. Yes, dua minggu lagi tanggal 1 Mei kita akan memulai our Alpha class, okay? For new Christian, Alpha class setiap hari Rabu di tempat ini. Jadi kalau saudara ingin mengikuti Alpha class ini, kalau saudara udah lama mengikut Tuhan atau kalau saudara baru masuk dalam iman Kristiani Saudara saya anjurkan untuk masuk ke kelas ini karena kelas ini sangat luar biasa membantu saudara dalam perjalanan saudara mengikut Tuhan. So kalau saudara ingin ikut kelas ini, kelas ini free, gratis. Saudara bisa daftar di link yang ada di Instagram kita di bio atau temui tim, tim people's team kita yang ada di luar and they can help you with that. Is that okay? Cool, oke okay, we gonna continue our worship in giving. Kita akan melanjutkan penyembahan kita di dalam pemberian kita and I'm gonna ask. One of our amazing leader, Dino, untuk sharing around our giving. Tertang nggak? Waduh. <laughs> bingung, bingung. Masih pagi soalnya. Morning service. Hi, morning everyone. Shalom. Wow, it's packed sampai belakang. Um, Interesting banget karena uh, biasanya kalau kita CG atau Komsel atau kalau di tempat lain namanya Komsel, we're all sitting all together yang di depan. Hi CG, connect group, hi. Jadi kalau Bapak Ibu uh, dari tadi kayaknya ada yang sinis-sinis gitu ya, kok orang boleh pada duduk di depan karena mereka ikut uh, tertanam di CG. Bukan duduk di depan tapi mereka datang duluan kemudian tertanam di CG. Ada satu uh, teman Komsel saya kemarin share, And really touch my really touch my heart dari Heskel 36 ayat 27. Kamu akan kuberikan hati yang baru dan roh yang baru di dalam batinmu dan aku akan menjauhkan dari tubuhmu hati yang keras dan kuberikan kepadamu hati yang taat. Sebenarnya ketika, ketika kita bahas ini kita bahas tentang Yerusalem baru kita bahas tentang Israel yang baru yang diubahkan. Dan ternyata hati kita pun Ketika kita bilang bahwa say yes to juru selamat, hati kita juga ikut berubah. Karena pada uh, pada Amsal 3 ayat 6, Akuilah dia dalam segala lakumu, maka ia akan meluruskan jalanmu. Janganlah engkau menganggap dirimu sendiri bijak, takutlah akan Tuhan dan jauhilah, ke, jauhilah kejahatan. Itulah yang menyembuhkan tubuh-tubuhmu dan menyegarkan tulangmu. Maka ayat 9, Muliakanlah Tuhan dengan hartamu dan dengan hasil pertama dari segala penghasilanmu. Dengan pengertian dunia kita sekarang yang FYP terus di TikTok kemudian reels keluar dengan segala macam kontroversi bahwa Kristen persembahan tidak perlu begini begitu. Tetapi tertulis di dalam Alkitab dan saya yakin ketika kita cinta sama seseorang, ketika kita sayang sama seseorang, we give when we give and we give. Right? Bohong kalau pacar atau suami anda atau istri anda sayang banget gitu. Tapi ternyata nggak pernah ngasih. Eh, ternyata gak pernah ngasih. Ternyata gak pernah antrin ke gereja. Atau ternyata tidak pernah memberi. Karena memberi adalah wujud dari hati yang diubahkan ketika kita jatuh cinta sama Tuhan. Dan kita diselamatkan dan kita menjadi baru. Ketika kita menjadi baru hati kita pun menjadi taat pada pemberian kepada Tuhan. Mari kita memberi sebelum kita memberi kita berdoa. Tuhan Yesus terima kasih untuk hari ini Tuhan, terima kasih untuk hari yang indah Tuhan, engkau sayang banget sama kami Tuhan, muzizat menyata dalam kehidupan kami, dahsyat luar biasa dalam kehidupan kami, maka kami ada di sini Tuhan. Kami bukan hanya datang dengan permasalahan kami, bukan hanya datang dengan struggle kami kepada engkau, tapi kami datang memuji memuliakanmu lewat suara kami, lewat tenaga kami, lewat waktu kami dan juga lewat apapun yang engkau berikan kepada kami. Berkat-berkat yang melimpah atas pekerjaan kami dan berkat yang melimpah yang engkau berikan kepada kami sebagai 
tools Tuhan, sebagai alat untuk memuliakanmu Tuhan. Biarlah kami memberi kembali ke dalam rumah Tuhan. Biar rumah Tuhan senantiasa diperluas, menjangkau jiwa-jiwa baru, menjangkau Bali, menjangkau Indonesia, bahkan menjangkau dunia. Kami angkat persembahan kami ke dalam tanganmu Tuhan. Di dalam nama Yesus kami berdoa. Amin. Thank you. Sambil saudara berikan ke dalam rumah Tuhan, we're gonna check out the screen to see what's coming up in the life of our church. Beberapa minggu lagi kita akan ada summer camp Pastor Gio. Pastor Gio tolong sebentar ini our youth pastor. So kita akan ada summer camp untuk anak-anak SMP, SMA dan anak kuliahan, kuliahan, kuliahan. <laughs> kuliahan. Cek, cek. Tolong yes. dijelaskan dulu ini yes, summer apa, camp. Bapak Pendeta. Summer camp adalah uh, jambore nasional kita. <laughs> buat Ini buat uh, all the youth and young adults from San uh, Tanya siapa youth and young adults? Pretty much umur 13 tahun sampai 25 tahun maksimal. Ini tanggal 23 Mei sampai tanggal 25 Mei. Di mana? Di Bedugul. Wow. Di Bedugul. But it's not summer really, it's, not it's winter. Yeah. Winter, karena dingin di atas ya. Yeah, it's winter camp. <laughs> Nanti ada Olympic Games juga. Oh wow, amazing. <laughs> uh, in, in summer camp, ini kita lakuin tiap tahun. Ini tiga hari. And registrasi pendaftarnya itu 350 ribu rupiah. Itu udah diskon. Itu udah diskon dari 3 juta 500, saudara. Kita diskon jadi 1 juta. Berarti 350 ribu rupiah. And ini uh, buat anak-anak saudara mungkin selalu pengen registrasi. Mereka tinggal perlu bawa baju ganti, uh, alkitab, notes, tumbler. And then semua itu udah disiapin dari transportasi, tempat tidur juga. And then sarapan, apa juga. Water heater, oh, mandi toilet. Amat, ya. Kita kita belum benar nggak camping ya. Kita belum benar nggak camping kayak nah, di rumput. Itu glamping. Kita di kita di villa gitu. Wow. Kan, ya. Wow. But it's, it's gonna be great karena tahun lalu, you know, there's a lot of good news, good reports dari summer camp tahun lalu. And ada banyak banget anak-anak muda yang diubahkan. And we're believing yeah. for more this year. Yes. Yes. It's gonna be great. And yeah. also, uh, kalau misalkan saudara di atas umur 25 tahun, tapi saudara pingin banget ikut kayak Gio, can I come? Bisa, saudara bisa. Uh, donasin uh, 350 ribu Sebenarnya bisa sponsor untuk anak-anak untuk registrasi Karena uh, plan kita untuk tahun ini adalah Kita ingin invite untuk ada beberapa anak panti asuhan yes. Untuk bisa ikut juga bersama-sama yeah, I think last year uh, anak saya satu kamar sama anak-anak yang dari panti yes. And they made friends sampai sekarang masih saling chatting wow, And they yeah. love it, they love it So yeah, yes, amazing Yes, good. Well, thank you Pastor Gio. And Anything registrasinya else? juga. Oh, registrasi bisa caranya? saudara uh, ada di huh? Gilsong Bali app. Kalau misalnya saudara belum registrasi, That's eh, right. belum download Gilsong Bali app. And also di depan juga uh, saudara bisa registrasi. And di depan kita lagi cari dana, uh, Pastor Engli. Cari dana ya? Ada yang jualan baju juga Anana, di depan you, you, buat summer miskin, camp. Yes, <laughs> situ saudara bisa registrasi juga buat summer camp. Yes. It's be amazing. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Gio. Oke, okay, so informasi, semua informasi itu ada di app Hillsong Bali. Jadi kalau saudara belum download, kenapa belum? Tolong download secepatnya and semuanya ada di situ. Are you good? Yes, oke. Okay. Saudara siap dengerin firman Tuhan? Mari kita semua bangkit berdiri sebentar. So pagi hari ini, oh no, sebelum pagi hari ini, tanggal 26 April. Our senior pastor, Pastor Phil Duli akan ada di Bali dan akan ada berbicara di tempat ini. Hari Jumat malam kita akan ada KKR, kesembuhan ilahi, no? KKR pokoknya di tempat ini dengan Pastor Phil Duli jam 7 malam di tempat ini. But pagi hari ini kita akan dengerin juga dari Pastor Phil melalui link ke Sydney, Australia. So I'm excited about it. Are you excited? Yes, tapi sebelum kita dengerin firman Tuhan Karena saya lihat tadi pagi saudara bangun terlalu awal Saudara belum merenggangkan tubuh saudara Belum olahraga We gonna turn to our left Belok kiri ke teman di depan saudara Minta izin boleh dipijit bahunya Yes, tolong dipijit Bilang relax Relax God is good Yes 
dicop-cop, cop-cop. Yes. Ya, bilang aja. Bilang apa ya? Sudah makan pagi belum? Antar gua beliin kopi bilang. Yes. Alright, sudah ya. Nah, belok-belok ke belakang. Ini ini mereka ini yang sebelah sini agak stres, Saudara. Oke. Okay. Tolong dipijit agak lama. Karena baru tanggal segini gajinya udah hampir habis. Tolong. Ya, dipijit agak lama. Ya, agak lebih lama, guys. Agak terlalu tegang di bahunya tuh. Heeh. Uh-uh. Alright, terlalu banyak makan mie goreng tanggal segini. Alright, di chop chop. Di chop chop. Bilang Tuhan Yesus baik. Masih dua minggu lagi baru gajian bilang ya. Alright, sudah? Nggak, lebih lama dikit lebih lama. Kan tadi bilang di sini stres ya. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Awesome, 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 awesome. Look at me. Eh, eh, jangan duduk dulu, jangan duduk dulu. Sebudaya di gereja ini adalah kita menghormati firman Tuhan dan orang yang akan memberi, memberitakan firman Tuhan. Dan pagi hari ini Pastor Phil akan membawa sesuatu yang luar biasa yang saya percaya akan memberkati kita semua. Walaupun Pastor Phil nggak ada di sini, tapi mari kita berikan uh, sambutan yang luar biasa buat firman Tuhan dan orang yang memberitakan firman Tuhan. Dan saudara boleh silahkan duduk. Thank you. Uh, my message today is simply titled, You... Have an assignment. You have an assignment. Suddenly, all the university students, anyone studying, went, "Oh no, I didn't come to church for this. I've got assignments. You're reminding me of my assignments. I took a study break just to be here, and now you're telling me I have an assignment." Yes, but here's the good news: it is a unique assignment. And I am not going to be marking your assignment. Good news. You don't have to hand it in. Uh, it's just actually the, the assignment is the God assignment that he has given you to live out for him. And we can look at a number of examples of this throughout God's word, the Bible. But we'll start in Matthew chapter 4. Verse 18, very simply, where Jesus speaks to some of the guys who would become his first followers, his first disciples. These are guys who are fishermen, but Jesus speaks to them and in a sense challenges them to live their life at a different level, speaks to them to say there's an assignment for you. So let's look at it in Matthew 4, uh, verse 18. It says that Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Verse 19, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Now you can read other gospels and get a whole lot more to the story of what happened there. But what this condensed version by Matthew is saying is that you guys, uh, in Jesus' uh, moment here, Jesus is saying, you guys have been living here, but there's a greater assignment. And, and, and it's wonderful what you've been doing, but there is more that I've called you to in regard to how you live your lives to affect people. Now, what's interesting is that Jesus challenges them right at the start of their journey that they are called to be fishers of men, to to live lives for for, uh, impacting the lives of men. And then right, let's look at the final words of Jesus in Matthew 28. Uh, So they were the beginning words. Now let's look at Jesus' final words because it's always interesting to see what the words were at the beginning and then what are the words at the end. And in Matthew 28... Verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples, so uh, Simon Peter was there, the, James was there, John was there, this, the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And then he goes up to heaven, which I always find just a little bit humorous, that he goes, I'm with you always, and then leaves. So there's a lot. 
going on there. But here, here we see this final statement that Jesus makes. He's thinking, okay, this is it. We've got to bring it home because I'm leaving these guys. Now the Holy Spirit is going to come. And yes, I will be with them, but not in the bodily form that I have been. So I need to get some really important words to them. And essentially, he says the same thing he says at the start, but he just expounds on it a little bit more. You've got an assignment. Don't just live below it. Don't just live for yourselves. Live for others. Make disciples. I'm with you and I'm giving you authority. But essentially, he's saying to the guys, you're more than fishermen. That's wonderful that you have that craft. That's wonderful that you, you, you've been able to do that. But there's more to you than that. And God, I believe, says the same to every one of us, that there is more to you than just what you do. There is a heavenly assignment that he has given each and every one of us. And as we start to understand what that looks like, It fuels our connection with God because we start to go on this journey of following him, of this God assignment, and we recognize, yes, I I may have a natural responsibilities and a a career and, and, and a family to raise and all of these things, and that's all part of what God's called me to. But there's more that he has for me as a follower of Jesus in the way I live my life and the way my life affects the lives of others. Now, we've spoken uh, around how we as a church have a very clear mission, and it's three pillars, and I'll just put it up on the screen again because I think it just helps us to go, okay, what what are we all about here? Why are we showing up on a Sunday morning? Why do we encourage people to come to a conference? Why do we talk about um, love thy neighbor as in, you know, helping and serving others? Why do we encourage you to be in a small connect group? Why do we do that? Well, we have a very clear, simple little mission. It's on the right-hand side on the screen if you're in the building. How cool is that? And look what I, what I can do. Let's see if we can get this right. I can actually push that away. <laughs> there we go. And then I can pull it back. Let's pull it back. Wow. It's amazing. Let's just leave it there where it is, right there. Three things that it says that we're about. Purpose-filled Jesus followers. It's not just a social gathering. We're purpose-filled Jesus followers. We're following after Jesus. We're getting to know Jesus. Some of you are brand new to this, and you're like, well, I, well, I love what I've read, but I, I want to know Jesus more. That's the journey we're all on following after Jesus. The the disciples started with this simple, okay, we'll follow you, and then went on this journey of getting to know who Jesus was and how he was calling them to live. But more than that, there's a purpose. So that's the first thing. The second thing is our lives are not called to live individually, but God always puts us in communities. We call it the church. You see community right throughout God's Word, the Bible. You see it in the Old Testament. God had His people in community, not in isolation. You see it in the New Testament, in the concept of the church, that God puts people in community. So we talk about healthy church communities. We want to be in a community together that's healthy. It's not perfect, but it's healthy in the way it operates. And finally, what do we want to be as we see in our mission is to be about significant, sustainable social impact. What does that mean? That we're outward focused. We're not just a group that lives for what we get out of this. We actually live for how we can impact the world around us. They may never thank us. Uh, They may or may not appreciate what we do, but we don't do it for their applause. We do it because in our hearts we believe that that is how God designed us to to do good works for the glory of God. So it's an outward-focused mission. It's it's about me growing inwardly as a uh, uh, purpose-filled follower of Jesus. It's about me growing in community, and then it's about me outwardly affecting the world around me. So with all of that, what's your purpose? What's your assignment? And here's the thing, it's always unique. It's different for every one of us. I'll take you a little bit of the journey of mine. I've, I've shared some of it before. We, 
We heard earlier Jesse talking about how he went to Hillsong College and how it impacted him. And there's an open day coming up and you should check it out. I went to, uh, I, I studied at university uh, and uh, University of Western Sydney, shout out alumni. Before that, I went to Castle Hill High School. Castle, that's right. Just down the road from Castle Towers, opposite Castle Hill RSL Club in Castle Street, Castle Hill, where there is no castle. If you can find it, let me know. I have not seen it. So I went to university, did a, University of Western Sydney, did a, a business degree. But while I'm there, I felt God stirring me. You know, you're kind of like, what, what, what's my purpose? What am I? And, and I felt God stir me about uh, hearing, a, hearing a, a, a speaker, preacher, someone on a platform like this say, uh, how long are the best minds going to go to IBM or Coca-Cola or these big multinational companies? When will some of the best minds go towards building the church? And I remember hearing that and thinking, maybe I should give the best of what I have to build the church. I've done this degree, but I don't know if that's what I should be doing right now with my life. And so at that point, Donna Crouch, who at the time was running our youth ministry, said, hey, we're starting an internship. You can come and serve in the youth ministry and we'll connect it with the Bible College, which at the time was called Power Ministry School. I have a diploma from PMS. They shortened it. it the marketing team was not up to speed. That's why we're now called Hillsong College. <laughs> It's just beginning, guys. People weren't thinking about those things. They're just, let's start something. It'll be great. So I, I was like, okay, I, I think I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this internship. Be involved in the youth ministry and, uh, and, and do Bible college part-time and, you know, do all of that. And so I, I start that journey and Donna says, hey, we've got a need in the 12 to 16 age group. That's where we need someone to help us. We, we had one youth group. We weren't into the different age groups, which we have now. And uh, so we need to separate it up and be more effective in reaching this younger group, 12 to 16 year olds. Phil, would you be interested in that? And I said, no. <laughs> they are punks. I know it sounds harsh, doesn't it? It's just how I felt at the time. I was like, I don't think I want to work with them. I don't work with the 17, 18 year olds. That, that'll be, that felt more where I'd like to be. And Donna said, well, we've got a real need here. And I remember literally going home and praying about it and feeling like God said, if that's where the need is, that's where I want you to serve. And, and so I went, I went back to Donna and said, okay, I'll do it. I'll start working uh, and, and let's look at what we can create for these 12 to 16 year old young people. Now, here's the thing. For some of us, we believe our God assignment has to be something that we feel really comfortable in. I did not feel really comfortable working with 12 to 16 year old young people at the time, but I felt that that was the next step and I was committed to being obedient on that journey. And so I just want to encourage you that sometimes we're waiting for the perfect assignment to fit together in every way. It doesn't usually work like that. There's a nudge, there's a step, and then you start on the journey. Uh, I, I wrote in my notes, our God-given assignment always begins with a step of obedience. It always begins with a step of obedience. And you've got to understand that that is always going to be part of your journey, that you, God kind of puts it out there and says it's up to you to take it up. I wasn't exactly clear on the details, but I was obedient to the prompting of God. And I want to encourage you in the same manner. Now, some of you know this, some of you, this is kind of a little bit of maybe revision, but maybe for some of you, there's a new assignment. Because what I've realized is that one assignment leads to the next assignment. <laughs> and, and I never fully knew that saying yes to this one assignment, okay, I'll do the internship and, 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 and all that was associated with that and then start serving with these 12 to 16 young people. I didn't know where that would lead. 
But one step of obedience, an assignment from God, leads to the next one. As you go on this assignment, there are things that you will have to confront. And so I want us now to go to the Old Testament of the Bible and consider one of the the greatest leaders there was of God's people, and that is a guy named Moses. And we're going to consider three things that Moses had to deal with as he went on his assignment. Now, you could, again, uh, consider how these also were what the disciples had to deal with as they went on assignment uh, with Jesus. But we're going to use Moses because there's some pretty clear examples of what he had to deal with and what he had to confront. And as you go on your God assignment, as you step into not just being a church attender, but someone who says there's a real purpose and I'm slowly stepping forward into that, or maybe I've been on assignment, but God, I feel like there's something new you're taking me into. These are the things that I believe all of us have to deal with and confront because I've had to in my own life. Now, let me just give you a little bit of the history of Moses, his story in a very, very short uh, segment. Many of you know this, but Moses is born at a time where the Hebrew people, and he's born into a Hebrew family, are living under Egyptian rule. The Egyptians are in control, okay? He's a Hebrew, okay? The Egyptian pharaoh, that's the king, the guy in charge, is really getting concerned that the Hebrew people are getting too strong, okay? If it was in politics today, it's like one political party is going, man, these guys are getting a big, uh, you know, power base. We've got to do something to get rid of them uh, and deal with them. So pharaoh is really concerned about the Hebrews. So what does he do? Well, he actually mandates a genocide. He says, all the boys, two years and under, have to be killed. Pretty horrible. Uh, But we still see things like this happen around the world. Maybe not to that extent, but there have been more recent examples of these kind of things. Because people want power and control. Pharaoh wants power and control. Moses, mum, is a smart woman. And what she does is she doesn't want her son killed. And so she makes a little basket of reeds. And she puts her son in a basket of reeds and is aware, it would seem, that Pharaoh's daughter bathes down in this particular river in in the Nile and sends Moses down, lets the son go, hoping that somehow he'll survive. Well, sure enough, this little basket of reeds with a baby in it floats by Pharaoh's daughter, She sees the baby, sees it's one of the Hebrew children and says, I want to look after him. This is a God moment. And then she says, find someone who can raise him. So they find the mother and she is able to raise her son in Pharaoh's house. Incredibly unique set of circumstances. Here's what I want to say to everyone here. You look at your life and sometimes think it's not fair Let me tell you, the unique circumstances somehow happened in a way that enable you to be more effective in your God assignment. I just want to say that because some of the, some of us think our past is literally our, our, you know, it's, it's, it's hamstrung us. It's stopped us. No, God uses all of that to make you better at handling the assignment he has for you. He teaches you a whole lot through it. So don't ever think it's wasted. Don't ever use it as your excuse. Moses in a unique set of circumstances that God is going to use. Gets raised in Pharaoh's house. Has this conflict on the inside because at some point somehow he understands he is a Hebrew but he is raised in an Egyptian house with Pharaoh. He has access to all of this uh, privilege and yet he sees that the rest of his people are being oppressed to the point where one day as he is maturing into a man sees some Egyptians beating up uh, some Hebrews and and he kills them, gets involved, murders them. And then people become aware of it. And so what does he do? He runs away. He's a great, courageous man and runs away. That was 
a little joke. He was a really strong, courageous leader who runs away. And he runs out into the desert, basically. Into the, the, he leaves everything. And there he ends up getting a new life, getting married, having kids. And in the back of the desert, God speaks to him. This is what I've realized is that God can speak to you anywhere about your assignment. You can think you've run away from God. Guess what? He'll find you. (laughs) And he'll speak to you in ways that you know it's God speaking to you, as he did to Moses. Spoke to him through a burning bush, got Moses' attention, spoke to him about an assignment. And so Moses decides, okay, I will go on this assignment. The assignment from God for Moses is to set God's people, the Hebrews, free from this uh, Egyptian pharaoh and the oppression they're under. It's a pretty big assignment, absolutely crazy. And Moses says, all right, let's go. I'll do it. Grabs his family and says, we're going to head back to Egypt, obviously full of all kinds of feelings of nerves and all the rest of it. So here's the first thing that Moses had to deal with as he stepped forward on his assignment. Number one, Moses had to confront his insecurities and grow in confidence. Every time you step out on any form of assignment with God, there will always be insecurities and there will always be confidence that you have to grow in. We often ask ourselves the question, am I capable? Do I have what it takes? Am I the right person for the job? And we can look at and consider all the reasons why we don't have what it takes. Moses does this. Listen, here's the thing. Moses could have stayed comfortably living in the back of the desert and uh, and just said, no, God, I'm not interested. Uh, I don't want to do this. And I've got a life over here. He would never have had to confront the insecurities. If you don't go on the assignment, guess what? You never have to confront the insecurities. You never have to grow in confidence. You just keep living the way you were. But if you're going to step up into some kind of assignment from God, which I believe he's taking all of us on that journey to step up into, there will be things you have to confront within yourselves. Things you, 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 you look at and you think, I lack. And here's an example when Moses has a conversation with God as he begins this journey in Exodus 4 verse 10. It says, but Moses pleaded with the Lord, oh Lord, I am not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm not now, even though you've spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Now that's not easy to say if you get tongue-tied and your words get tangled. Nonetheless, he said it. Then the Lord asks Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Here's what I love. I love when God speaks to you in a way that rebukes you and loves you at the same time. Have you noticed that God can do that? It's like, I love you, but get yourself in order. Then the Lord, as I said, asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. God, like I say, rebukes in love. God doesn't have a problem with Moses being insecure, but he does have a problem with Moses not trusting him. It's okay to be a little bit insecure. It's okay to question your ability. It's okay to wonder, do I have what it takes? But it's not okay to not trust that God will be with you and God will enable you. God has put you in a unique place for a unique purpose and a unique assignment, and he will grace you for it. Moses had all these insecurities, but he had to deal with it. He had to confront it. He had to develop in confidence. Second thing, Moses had to live according to a new, higher standard. Whenever you decide you're going on a mission, you're stepping into this God assignment, guess what? It is going to challenge certain things that were acceptable before. We see this again further on in Exodus 4. There's a confrontation between God and Moses. Moses has accepted God's assignment. 
Moses starts on the journey towards Egypt. And then there's this tiny little passage and you read it, you wonder what is going on when God wants to kill Moses. So let's have a read of this in Exodus 4 verse 24. It says, On the way to Egypt at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife, Zipporah, Zippy to her friends, just in the transcript notes, took a flint knife and circumcised her son. Poor kid. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said a bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. What is going on? Do you ever read the Bible and like, what just happened? Like, you, you speak to Moses, God, you challenge him. He says, yes, he's going, he's on the journey and you want to kill him. What is going on? See, what has happened that uh, scholars would suggest is that God has said to Moses, go on an assignment, but as soon as he steps out on that assignment, the standard changes. You're representing me. You're going to represent my people. Part of the covenant I've made with my people is a blood covenant that involves circumcision. You've neglected that. Now, that's okay if you stay in the desert with your family. But if you're going on the assignment, it's going to require something more of you. It's going to require you to deal with things that were acceptable before. They're not acceptable now. The God assignment is always going to challenge you to live at a different and a higher standard. And, and I, I've, I've just got to be honest with you. That's how it is. That when you choose to pursue the God plan for your life, there will be things that were acceptable before that you know you can't live like that anymore. You have to lay that down. You have to get rid of it. You have to cut it out of your life. You have to go through a journey of saying, that is not how I'm living. Because i got to live at a different level because of the God assignment for my life. And here we see this go on where Zipporah, who many would say was not even of Hebrew origin, circumcises her son because she knows they've got to change the standard that they've been living by. We're in. And God, if we're following you, we're all in. This is going to cost us something. And, and I'd love to say that, that it, you can stay how you are and go on your assignment, but I've just learned that every time it's cost me something. Every time I've had to deal with certain things and go, okay, that was comfortable, but I can't live in that anymore. I've got to choose to live here now. And God does that to all of us. And the third thing that I'm learning that I see in Moses that I think we all have to deal with is Moses had to leave the people to be with God. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're with people all the time. Part of our mission is healthy communities. God puts us in communities. That's how we operate. But here's what I've learned, is that everyone has an opinion about everything. <laughs> And that's fine, but it's not always what God's saying. And we see this, and, and, and I put this in my notes, actually, you cannot allow the opinions of others to affect your God-given assignment to limit it or diminish it. Because that can happen if you listen to the people too much. In Exodus 24, 12, verse 12 onwards, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on this mountain. Stay there and I'll give you the tablets of stone on which I've inscribed the instructions and commands so you can teach the people. You've got to come up to where I am and you're going to have to leave the people for a bit. 
So Moses and his assignment, Joshua set out and Moses climbed up the mountain of God. Moses told the elders, stay here and wait for us until we come back. Aaron and Hur, who's a him, although his name's Hur, but he's not a Hur, he's a him. Aaron and Hur, who's a him, are here with you. If anyone has a dispute while I'm gone, consult with them. I've learned that I have to keep going back to God to hear clearly from him about the assignment that he has for me. In fact, in Luke 5, we read about Jesus who was with people, who served people, who had these disciples who he was teaching and developing. Luke 5 verse 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus prayed? Yeah. Jesus went alone to be with his heavenly father because he's living in a fleshly body which has all kinds of fleshly desires and he has to go to be with God so he can stay on assignment for what God has called him to. We all have to keep going back to God while you're on assignment so that God can continue to refresh you and remind you what really matters. What are the priorities? What's this all about? And make sure your heart is right with him. Because if you don't, you end up with what happens later on in Exodus 32. Moses puts uh, Aaron and her in charge and the people start going, hang on, we don't have a leader. Where's Where's, where's, where's Moses? Where, where's the God that we've been serving? He's not here. We need another one. And Aaron and her panic. Aaron panics. He's like, yeah, I don't know what to do. We better please the people. Let's make sure the people are pleased because we, 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 we don't want them to, you know, kind of like mount some kind of, uh, you know, insurrection or whatever against us. We, we better make sure that they know that we've, you know, we're listening to them. And so Aaron gets all this gold from everybody, melts it all down and makes a golden calf and says, here's your God, everything's okay. And then Moses sees what's going on, loses, loses it, comes down the mountain, can't believe what's happened. And I love Aaron's excuse. Aaron goes, well, um, like we just threw the gold into the fire and out came a calf. <laughs> so I don't even know how it happened. It just did. Like this whole passage to me has, is just so fascinating and a little bit comedic because then Moses goes, all right, well, I'll show you. Grind down the gold, grind down the gold, put it in jugs, give the people, uh, put it in cups or whatever and make them drink it. That's literally what Moses says. You have to drink the golden calf. And so they did and it was bad. When you don't keep listening to God, and you assume you've just got to constantly do what the people say, you can lose sight of where the God assignment should take you. Now, we're all about loving people, serving people, doing what God's called us to do in leading and, and loving and discipling people. But you personally can't be swayed by the opinion because it will happen everywhere all the time. Worship team can come and join me. I have had examples of this time and time again. I, I've shared examples of this time and time again. One of my... Uh, you know, significant examples is our assignment led us to South Africa. And for a number of years, in fact, I think it was April 6th, so just a couple of days ago, it would have been 16 years uh, that, that we went and arrived with our little family uh, with a assignment to start a church in Cape Town. And I remember on that journey, we were looking for a venue. And I've told some of you this story before, and I felt this downtown convention center would be a great place to launch church. And so I talked to some people about it, as you do, because you're excited. You got ideas, you got dreams, you talk to people about your dreams. Sometimes people don't see the dreams the way you see them. Sometimes they haven't heard from God the way you've heard from God. And I remember talking to someone who was a pastor in the city and I'm like, hey, this is where I'm thinking about having church because it's downtown and then people from the north or the south or wherever could come and it wouldn't be one area over another and it's pretty central. And I remember him saying to me, that's an expensive venue. Do you think you could afford it? Maybe you should start somewhere smaller. 
And I, I was like, yeah, I, I, I guess you, maybe you're right. Maybe we're thinking too big. And, and then I met with a business guy uh, who I thought would be a big thinker and explained to him, hey, we're looking at this venue downtown. And, I, and he looked at me and said, are you trying to prove something by going there? And I remember thinking, maybe, am I, am I doing this out of ego? Am I trying to prove something by going there? What's, what's the motivation of my heart? And all these things, you know, uh, start to get challenged and you start to think maybe that's not part of the God assignment. Uh, but then I also listened to another voice, and that was the voice of my wife, which is very similar to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God many times. And all the husbands said, Amen. And all the wives even louder said, Amen. Yes, dear. They are helpful lines in a marriage. Yes, dear. And so... <laughs> My wife, I I was talking to her, I was like, oh, maybe we're thinking too big. Maybe we shouldn't look at that. And she goes, well, why don't you just at least go and have a conversation? You haven't even talked. I talked myself out of this before I didn't talk to the convention center people. Hadn't even been there. She's like, why don't you just at least go and talk to them? I said, yes, dear. (laughs) So we went down, had an appointment, met up with this lovely lady there and uh and this is you got to understand this is 2008 this is we had church in london we had church in kiev we we literally had church in sydney didn't have churches all around the world as we do now or across australia and and uh so i was thinking i'm gonna have to explain to her what we're trying to do you know we want to use the venue every week it's not just a one-off we want to have a church service in there and use it each Sunday. And, and she looks at me and she stops. She goes, no, it's okay. I know who you are. And I said, really? She goes, yeah, my, my brother went to London and he was away from God. And he ended up going to your church in London. And his life got radically turned around. And then she says, I'm a Christian. She says, I actually believe God got me this job so I can help you to have church right here. She was on assignment. She didn't even know it. And her assignment connected with our assignment. And then she said, and I'm going to make sure you get this for the cheapest possible price. Amen. God looks after all those details. But if I just keep listening to the people, sometimes I'm going to miss the God miracle on the assignment. So I want to encourage you in your assignment. There are things you're going to have to confront, but keep taking the next step in faith, trusting, knowing that God is with you. As a church community, we are taking the next steps together. And my final little note I put here is your God-given assignment has deep purpose, but it's always outworked in community. Our assignment in South Africa was to help build a community. Your assignment is an individual one, but it's always connected to the community of the body of Christ. However that looks, we need both of these elements working together. Moses' assignment was for the community to lead them out of their oppression. It wasn't just about him. It was about something much bigger. And it always is for all of us. Can we stand together? Let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank you that your word speaks to us, challenges us, encourages us, and reminds us that, Lord, you are in control And our responsibility is to be obedient to you and to keep walking forward with steps of faith. Lord, I pray as we uh, have the courage to step into the assignment, to keep going on the assignment, maybe to step into the new assignment, uh, that we would do it knowing that uh, it's it's going to require a whole lot of us uh, to confront some things. But Lord, we do, we do it with faith. We do it with faith, knowing you're with us and you're able. 
And so, Lord, I just pray for people here who may be faced faced with some challenges, uh, that they would have the courage to confront them and move forward. Just with heads bowed and eyes closed, uh, if if that really spoke to you, that message in some way of maybe, um, you know, there's some insecurities, and you're like, God, can you help me with these? And you've got to build in some confidence uh, you know, maybe that's a real thing. Maybe you, you just need to keep hearing from God because some voices have really started to restrict your faith uh, and you've you got to move forward from that. Uh, or maybe, you know, you're someone who's going, you know what, God, I, I, I really want to, I want to serve you, but it just kind of seems hard with what I'm facing right now. You know God is challenging you to live at a higher standard. And you're saying, God, can you help me to do that? If, the, if that's you with heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to pray with you. I just Sometimes it's good to respond to what you're hearing today. Just lift your hand and let, let's pray. Amen. A whole lot of hands around the place. Other locations online, let us know. Other locations, just lift your hand. I just want to pray because I know this is very real. I've faced it on my own journey. I'm sure many of us have at different times. Lord, I just pray whatever the assignment, Lord, whatever it might be that people are facing, that they just have the courage, uh, Lord, where they need to, to continue to grow in faith and in confidence uh, and and to know that you're going to give them the words, you're going to give them what they need. Lord, for others, that they would leave behind the things that are just going to hold them back. Lord, you're calling people to live at a higher standard. I pray we'd have the courage to to do that and and to keep moving forward in that with the way we live our lives. And for others, Lord God, that you would um, just help us to to keep going back to you and let your voice be the central voice to what we listen to and what drives us and what motivates, what leads us forward. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit, Lord, the God assignment, whatever it might be, Lord, I I, I just get uh, excited in my spirit as people step forward into the assignment you have for them. Bless them, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. We're going to work. Come on. All the glory in the church, all the glory on the earth, belongs to you, belongs to you. All the praises I can find, Belongs to you, belongs to you. All the glory in the church, all the glory on the earth. Belongs to you, belongs to you. All the praises I can find every second of my life. Belongs to you. Come on, all the glory.
Amen. Suatu firman Tuhan yang luar biasa. A great reminder for us. Amen. Mari kita terima kasih Pastor Phil walaupun dia beliau nggak ada di sini but saya percaya kita semua dikuatkan pagi hari ini. And I want to pray for some people in this place. Saya ingin berdoa buat beberapa orang di tempat ini yang mungkin saudara datang lagi liburan dan diajak teman ke gereja atau saudara tahu tentang Hillsong dari Instagram atau You drive past and you see the church and you just want check it out. Tapi saya mau bilang ini bukan suatu kebetulan saudara datang ke tempat ini saudara walked into this building. Karena Tuhan yang tuntun setiap langkah saudara. Dan dia ingin saudara ada di tempat ini duduk dan mendengarkan firman Tuhan yang baru diberitakan sama Pastor Phil. Dan mungkin saudara berkata yang ini saya udah jauh dari Tuhan, udah bertahun-tahun, but somehow saya datang gereja pagi hari ini. You know what? Bukan sebuah, sebuah kebetulan saudara datang pagi hari ini. Karena Tuhan ingin reconnect with you again. Tuhan telah menunggu saudara untuk come home all this time. Seperti anak yang terhilang waktu dia balik ke rumah bapaknya dari kejauhan. Waktu dia berjalan ke rumah bapaknya. Bapaknya ketika melihat dia, dia berlari towards the sun. Dan itu yang saya rasakan buat some people in this place. Saudara mungkin udah jauh dari Tuhan, but you made the decision this morning to come to church. Dan Bapak di surga melihat saudara membuat keputusan itu dan dia so excited for it. Tapi mungkin saudara berkata, Englin saya nggak pernah kenal Tuhan, saya nggak pernah... Mengundang dia sebagai yes, Tuhan dan Juru Selamat dalam kehidupan saya. You know, kekristenan bukan tentang agama yang ada tertera di KTP saudara. Atau mungkin lahir di keluarga Kristen membuat saudara merasa bahwa saudara seorang Kristen. No, it's not about that. Kekristenan adalah hubungan pribadi saudara bersama Yesus Kristus. Orang tua saudara nggak bisa putuskan itu buat saudara. Suami saudara nggak bisa putuskan itu buat saudara. Keturunan saudara, saudara berlahir di dalam orang keluarga Kristen demi keluarga Kristen, tidak menjadikan saudara seorang Kristen. Tapi ketika saudara mengundang Yesus Kristus secara pribadi masuk ke dalam kehidupan hati saudara dan mempunyai hubungan pribadi bersama Yesus Kristus, that's when your life, your faith journey begins. So pagi hari ini, while everybody close your eyes and bow your heads, tiap orang menutup, kepala, menutup mata dan menundukkan kepala, saya ingin memberikan privacy buat beberapa orang di tempat ini. Mungkin itu saudara untuk pertama kali, saudara akan mengundang Yesus Kristus pagi hari ini masuk ke dalam hati saudara. Atau mungkin itu saudara yang sudah pernah mempunyai hubungan bersama Yesus Kristus, but somehow something happened in your life and you run away from God. Karena Tuhan nggak pernah berlari jauh menjauhi saudara. Kitanya manusia yang selalu berlari menjauhi Tuhan. Dan kalau itu saudara dan saudara ingin kembali kepada Tuhan, this is your moment. Dan pada hitungan yang ketiga, saya ingin saudara dengan berani, nggak usah malu, mengangkat tangan dan mengundang Yesus masuk ke dalam hati saudara. Thank you for the hands. Satu, dua, tiga, kalau itu saudara. Terima kasih untuk tangan-tangan yang terang. On the left, right at the back, in the middle, on the right. So many hands. Terima kasih. This is your moment. Ini adalah momen saudara untuk make it right with God. Terima kasih. So many hands. Saudara boleh buka mata, look at me. Banyak tangan yang terangkat pagi hari ini untuk mengundang Yesus. Masuk ke dalam kehidupan mereka Kita bertepuk tangan Karena firman Tuhan berkata Satu orang berkata ya kepada Yesus Beribu-ribu malaikat di surga bersuka cita Semari sekali lagi Kita berikan kemuliaan yang paling meriah Bagi Tuhan kita pagi hari ini So this is what we gonna do As a family, as a church family Kita akan berdoa bersama-sama Menemani teman-teman kita yang sudah membuat Keputusan sebuah doa yang Sangat simple tapi ya Powerful, yaitu doa keselamatan atau salvation prayer. So are, are we ready guys? Yes? Oke okay, mari kita berdoa. Bapa di surga, terima kasih untuk mengirimkan anakmu yang tunggal 
mati di atas kayu salib, bangkit pada hari yang ketiga untuk memenangkan aku. Mulai detik ini, Yesus Kristus adalah Tuhan dan Juru Selamatku. Mulai detik ini, aku adalah milikmu dan engkau milikku. Amin, amin, amin. Sekali lagi berikan kemuliaan yang paling meriah bagi Tuhan Yesus. Itu adalah keputusan yang luar biasa yang saudara bisa lakukan pagi hari ini. And untuk menandai keputusan itu kami ingin memberikan hadiah sebuah alkitab bagi saudara. Dan ini um, it's a pocket size, yes taruh di pocket. Um, but ini mungkin saudara berkata, Englin saya udah punya alkitab, nggak apa-apa ambil lagi. Ambil tulis tanggal hari ini yang menandai keputusan yang luar biasa. And I believe ketika saudara bukan simpan Alkitab ini tapi buka dan baca Alkitab ini. Alkitab ini akan menuntun firman ini akan menuntun kehidupan saudara. Is that okay? Sekali lagi tepuk tangan buat teman-teman kita yang buat keputusan yang luar biasa. Well this is it. Ini akhir dari kebaktian kita. Apakah saudara diberkati pagi hari ini? Yes. Habis ini mau kemana? Mau makan siang kah? Mau apa? Yes, babi guling kali ya. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Sebentar sore kebaktian jam 4 dan jam 6 sore. I'm excited because our pastors will be back from mission trip. And mereka akan membawa banyak sekali kesaksian. I cannot wait for it. So kalau saudara tidak punya rencana apa-apa sebentar sore, come back. Come back jam 4 dan jam 6 sore. Kalau sudah punya rencana, cancel, oke? Okay? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm joking. But enjoy your holiday yang lagi holiday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Are you ready to go home? Yes? Mari saudara angkat tangan and I'm gonna pray for you. Bapak di surga, engkau tunggui keluar masuk mereka. Engkau berkati keluarga mereka. Engkau berkati pekerjaan mereka. Jadikan mereka kepala dan bukan ekor. Saya percaya Tuhan Yesus di dalam hari-hari ke depan. Mereka akan menyaksikan kebaikanmu kepada keluarga mereka kepada komunitas mereka mereka akan menampakkan kasihmu in Jesus name i pray and everybody says